Hello friends, welcome to a new lecture today. Now I would like to discuss about one more type of fracture which is called as scaphoid fracture. So as the name says, there is the fracture in the scaphoid bone. This is most common in young adults. It is most common in young adults. If you see, there is a fracture of the scaphoid bone. So if this is the scaphoid bone, the fracture of the scaphoid bone, it occurs through the waist of the scaphoid bone. So this occurs through the waist of scaphoid bone. Rarely it occurs through the tuberosity but mostly it occurs through the waist of the scaphoid bone. Now what are the clinical features? of scaphoid fracture the clinical the main clinical features of scaphoid fracture are there are pain and swelling over the here that the uh, scaphoid bone will be somewhere here so there will be pain and swelling over the radial aspect of the wrist okay pain and swelling over radial aspect of the wrist and uh, if you see on examination of this of this radial aspect of the wrist you can elicit tenderness also then you will have to do an x-ray investigations the best investigation is x-ray of wrist where you do anterior posterior view lateral view and also oblique view okay this is a x-ray of wrist you do all the three views which are anterior posterior lateral and oblique view and if you see the uh, if if you see that the fracture is present this fracture which is there it is not a, a displaced fracture or it is not a complete fracture mostly it is like a crack so because it is present has a crack most commonly so this is not visible under the x-rays initially but if the fracture is strongly suspected then you will have to repeat the x-rays after two weeks if this fracture is strongly suspected then you can repeat the uh, repeat the repeat an x-ray to know whether the fracture is present or not now how are you going to treat the fracture the fracture of scaphoid bone it is mainly treated by conservative method okay because it is not much displa displaced mostly the fracture which is there it is not much displaced you'll just uh, see it has a crack so as a result you don't need to do extensive treatment you will just have to do an immobilization using a cast which is called as scaphoid cast so this is done for three to four months okay three to four months and then you will have to uh, just remove it and you'll have to start exercising then it will subside now what is scaphoid cast scaphoid cast is a cast which will so i'll just uh, this is the elbow this is the hand okay scaphoid hand this scaphoid hand will start from below the elbow it starts from below the elbow and then it will continue till the metacarpals these are the carpals okay not the carpals but here there will be metacarpals okay these will continue up to the heads of the metatarpals metacarpals meta 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 okay so this will include the head of the meta metacarpals and then it also includes the thumb okay entire thumb and then in the thumb up to the interphalangeal joints not the entire thumb only up to the interphalangeal joints that is up to here it involves the up to the head of the meta metacarpals and also uh, it includes the thumb that too up to the interphalangeal joints but it does not include the other fingers so this is the called as scaphoid cast okay this cast is called a scaphoid cast now in this in this scaphoid cast the wrist is maintained in dorsiflexion little dorsiflexion not complete little dorsiflexion if there if 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 in case if it's displaced if it's widely displaced then you will have to do open reduction and internal fixation and you can use a special screw in this uh, uh, technique that is called as Hebert screw so in open reduction and internal fixation of scaphoid uh, fracture you will use a screw which is called as Hebert screw now what are the complications of this 
uh, scaphoid fracture. The main complications are one, avascular necrosis. One fracture, one uh, complication is avascular necrosis because uh, the scaphoid fracture it is occurring through the waste of the scaphoid, right? So through the waste, the blood surface which is the blood supply which is there to the scaphoid it is precarious. So whenever the fracture is through the waste, there is a high probability that the proximal fragment which is there that becomes avascular. So avascularization, whenever there is avascular necrosis, the patient uh, has pain or weakness of the waist and you'll have to do an x-ray. Then in the x-ray, you will see that there is non-union uh, of the fracture. Now, you'll have to treat it. The treatment is, if symptomatic, you'll have to just excise the, vascu uh, excise the avascular segment. Avascularize the segment should be excised that's it okay that is about the vascular avascular necrosis the next is, uh, complication is there can be delayed and non-union okay this can be due to imperfect immobilization or impaired blood supply if there is delayed or non-union then you will have to if it's delayed union then you can do a bone grafting can be done if it is a case of non-union, there can be uh, change. And if if it is a case of non-union, you will just have to excise the part of the bone which is there. So this is about the. So one more uh, complication is wrist osteoarthritis. So in the wrist osteoarthritis. This can also occur due to avascular necrosis or non-union. So for this wrist osteonecrosis, you will just excise the uh, styloid process of the radius. And if it's extreme cases, then you will have to do wrist osteoarthrosis. So thank you guys for watching my lecture. Thank you.